Hey everyone, my name is Aaron and this is Dad.0. Oh. Today we're going to be taking a look and reviewing the Nook 10-inch tablet from Barnes & Noble. This is the first time Barnes & Noble has released a new version of the Nook in a few years. And they designed this one with Lenovo. It has a 10.1 inch HD screen, a really sleek and modern design. So I picked one up, I've been using it for a while, and I just wanna tell you exactly what you get and my review of it. And as always, I built chapters into the timeline below. So at any point, if you wanna skip ahead, feel free to do so. First, I just wanna cover the unboxing. And when this thing first came, I was really confused. I thought that Barnes & Noble might have sent me the wrong tablet because it comes in a Lenovo Tab M10 HD box. And I was expecting it to come in some sort of Nook branded box, but nope, this one comes in just a Lenovo Tab M10 HD box. And it's not until you open it up and you take a look at the tablet itself that you realize that you got the right product because this does have a Nook logo on the back of it. And the first thing you notice when you pick up this tablet is just how light it is. It is less than 15 ounces, 14.8 ounces to be exact. It is really thin. It has a nice all glass and metal design and it feels great in the hands. I could definitely see myself holding this for long periods of time. And if you're using this as an e-reader, as most people will, you're gonna want something light for those long reading sessions. More on the tablet in just a bit, but let's see what else you get. In the side compartments, you have a 10 watt wall charger and a USB-C cord. And the only other thing in the box is the user manuals and the tool to open the SD card holder. So getting back to that tablet design, this thing measures in at 9.51 inches by 5.88 inches by 0.21 inches thick. Again, it weighs 14.8 ounces, which is actually less than the Fire HD 10. It has that 10.1 inch IPS HD display. So they went away from e-ink like they had on the old Nook tablets. And this might be a little bit controversial because e-ink is typically a lot easier on the eyes for those people that like to read for long periods of time. The pros of that is obviously you get a color display with a higher resolution. And that's helpful if you're gonna be using this for more than just e-reading. Now, like I said, the display is HD, but it's not full HD. It's 1280 by 800, which is just a little bit more than 720p. It does get nice and bright. It gets up to 400 nits of brightness, but even though it does get nice and bright, that IPS panel is really glossy. So using this outdoors is a little bit difficult. And this display comes in at 149 pixels per inch, which is lower than the Amazon Fire HD 10 and the Fire HD 8, and actually most of its competitors as well and you can kind of see it when you're looking at the screen. It does look a little bit pixelated. Some of the text does look a little fuzzy. And for me, this was just a little bit disappointing, especially because this is built to be a reading tablet. To have that low resolution and that low pixels per inch screen and fuzzy text, just seems like it's gonna put a lot of strain on your eyes if you're gonna be using this for long periods of time. For buttons and inputs, you're looking at a volume rocker, a sleep power button on one side, along with a micro SD card reader that's capable of reading up to 256 gigs of expandable storage. And on the other side of the tablet, there is some pins and some connectors, and I'm not sure what exactly this is for as there is no accessories that would take advantage of those pins and connectors, but they may be coming out with a keyboard case soon for this. On the top, there's just a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You have a USB-C port on the bottom for charging. There are two speakers, one on each side, and they are optimized for Dolby Atmos. For cameras, you have a 5 megapixel front facing camera, and that camera does allow for facial recognition. On the back, you have an 8 megapixel autofocus camera. Both of these cameras are what I would consider to be okay. They are a little bit slow to focus, but the front facing camera, the facial recognition works pretty well, and it works just fine for video conferencing. For a processor, you're looking at a MediaTek processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage. And again, that can be expanded up to 256 gigs using that micro SD slot. You have Bluetooth 5.0. It does not support Wi-Fi 6. And for an operating system, you have Android 10, which means you have the full Google Play Store on this. And essentially, you just have an Android tablet here with kind of a Barnes & Noble Nook skin added to it. So this is preloaded with the Nook app, obviously, but also the currently reading widget, a library widget, a shopping widget, and a little bit more. And then it also has a Nook theme wallpaper. 
All of this you can remove and just use this as an Android tablet if you wish. And that includes downloading other e-reading apps, like you can download the Amazon Kindle app or any other e-reading app that you wish. So while this is the Barnes & Noble Nook, and it does come preloaded with those apps, essentially you can make this into your own e-reader or just basic Android 10 tablet if you want. Okay, so let's get into the performance of this Nook tablet. Again, it has a MediaTek processor, P22T, and it also has two gigs of RAM, now the MediaTek P22 processor does not benchmark highly. It is kind of on the slower end of processors and it doesn't get helped out much by that two gigs of RAM on this tablet. So for performance, this is rather sluggish and that comes out in the Geekbench scores as well. But I typically don't like to base my performance reviews off of Geekbench scores. I just like to use it with my day-to-day -day tasks, playing games, streaming videos, and just see how it operates. And I have kind of mixed feelings using this because on one hand, I do feel like it handles very lightweight tasks well. That is things like emailing, web surfing, and streaming content like Netflix or YouTube. But on the other hand, it is a very glitchy tablet. Transitions are typically not very smooth. They stutter quite a bit. Apps have crashed quite a bit in my couple weeks of usage here. Lightweight games have performed fine, but if you try to get into more graphically intensive gaming, they tend to, again, stutter and freeze and sometimes crash. So at times, this has been very frustrating to use. But then I remember that this is a Barnes & Noble Nook. It is built to be a reading tablet first, and then kind of an Android tablet second. So when it comes to reading and using the preloaded Nook apps, it works just fine. But then if you start to use things from the Google Play Store, you start to notice that sluggishness in the tablet. For battery life, they quote 11 hours. I'm seeing roughly eight to nine hours with mixed usage. That is using this as an e-reader and using some other things like email apps, web browsing, gaming, and streaming videos. So depending upon what you think of this, if it's an Android tablet, I think it has pretty good battery life, but compared to most e-readers out there, it definitely doesn't last as long. So overall, I'm just a little bit confused as to what this is trying to be. Is it trying to be a budget Android tablet with the Nook apps and features on it? Or is it trying to compete with e-readers that has the capability of doing more? Because either way you look at it, I don't think it excels in either category. As a budget Android tablet, the MediaTek processor and two gigs of RAM make this very sluggish when it comes to playing games, multitasking, basic transitions. Like I said, there's often times that it starts to freeze or stutter or crash. And as a reading tablet, it doesn't have a full HD screen. It has an IPS panel, which may put strain on some people's eyes. The text can be kind of fuzzy with that low pixels per inch display. It isn't great to use outside. It doesn't have good battery life compared to other e-readers out there. So based on that, I'm not sure I can recommend this to anyone. If you're looking for an e-reader, I think there's a lot better options on the market right now. And if you're looking for a budget Android tablet, Again, I think there's way better options for the money out there. But that's just my opinion of this. One man's opinion, and I'm sure that there's people out there that have bought this and love it. And if you're one of those people, leave a comment down below and tell me exactly why you bought it and why you love it so much. Because maybe I'm missing something here. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked the video, press that like button. Also, consider subscribing. Thanks a lot, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video.